All right, this is take three. First one, I kind of miscued and started over. The second one ran on. So Donald Trump said that uh, he's not going to have time for retribution. He's going to be too busy being successful. My question is, successful at what? And in what capacity? If you do not get rid of the tyrannical, corrupt pieces of shit currently in power, as well as the folks that have been working behind the scenes in office jobs and bureaucracy that are not elected, but make policy decisions and directives that affect us, as well as how the law is enforced upon us. If you don't get rid of that shit, there will be no America. There will be no government that you're running with which to be successful. Foreign policy will not matter when the country is dead. That's it. That's all there is to it. So if you're not running for retribution against the deep state, I'm not voting for you. And I doubt most people would either. At this point, whoa, the gas was cheaper, the things were better. Yeah. But the only reason that we even had them come down to where they were was because the previous government administration before that fucked everything else up too. And they always keep doing it. And they will always keep doing it more as long as we keep allowing them to. The founding documents of our country are the Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution, including the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights simply gets more specific on the basic general three principle that the Declaration of Independence lays out, that being life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Basically, all natural rights stem from some variation of those. Your life is not worth living if you are a slave. Liberty means freedom, not constriction. Pursuit of happiness doesn't guarantee happiness, but says you have a right to try and be happy in life. If you are enslaved, not free, happiness is not possible. You may have relative less low spots that you can mistakenly label as happiness. But if you are an oppressed slave to a corrupt government, there's no life, there's no liberty, there is damn sure no pursuit of happiness. Now the Constitution lays out the structure of the government and the amendments lay out the rights that people are born with that that government that they've just set the structure out for is firmly prohibited from infringing. The First Amendment, basically there because at the time it was written, the government that was ruling the colonies that would become America was basically mandating that everyone follow a particular denomination of Christianity that was the official church religion of England. People said, no, we don't want to follow that. We want to follow our own. Freedom of speech. People were being arrested for dissent. They were being taxed extraordinarily for dissent, for disagreeing with the government. Freedom to gather peaceably and petition the government for redress of grievances. This means that, for example, if a bunch of people showed up at the Capitol like a million folks or half a million or something, unarmed, peaceable. The government is supposed to listen, not turn them into insurrectionists. That was kind of the final domino in the fascism that we're currently engulfed in. The problem is we have a couple of establishment candidates and we have a couple of anti-establishment candidates. And one of these anti-establishment candidates began the campaign on the concept of getting rid of the cancer 
that is afflicting our nation. And now he's saying we're going to be too busy being successful. But I again ask, successful at what? What possible success can there be if in seeking to achieve whatever goals you're talking about, you completely omit handling the problem? It's like that episode of uh, Futurama where the 80s Wall Street guy with bonitis gets frozen until they can find a cure for bonitis, and then they thaw him out, and he's going around doing his thing, being successful, and he completely forgets to take the cure for bonitis and goes, and then he dies. Is that what's going to happen? We're going to get into office. We're going to be so basking in our own glory that we're going to forget that the whole years leading up to that was nothing but fake news, tyranny, political persecutions. We're going to forget that. I think Vivek Ramaswamy is very right. They're not going to let Trump anywhere near that power. So I guess he can say whatever he wants. They're not going to let him win. If he does win the election, they will definitely give him the Kennedy treatment shortly thereafter. I'm not sure that they will ever let Vivek Ramaswamy anywhere near the power either. Even though at this point, everything that he's saying, uh, I don't know to what extent this actually sticks in his mind or if this is something that he's just saying because he tells other people, stop saying what the pollsters are telling you to say that people want to hear. But he knows that the, what he's saying is what people want to hear about freedom. But let's say any of these guys gets into office claiming that they're going to fix problems and instead they just don't. That makes them part of the problem. Now, I just talked about the First Amendment. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Second Amendment. Um, gird your loins. I got to break something to you. There were moments in Congress where representatives who have been doing this for decades upon decades acted surprised at the notion. The Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms of all the people in the country, all the people in the country, is not granted by the government. It is respected by the government. And if it's not respected by the government, that amendment exists to get rid of the non-respecting parts of government when it comes to our rights. The Second Amendment is not about personal self-defense in the home or when you're walking down the road, although it applies. It is not about hunting, although it applies. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Well, you can't live if you can't eat, right? What if you need to hunt? But specifically... The government of Britain, ruling over the colonies, was going to attempt to disarm the population in order to rule them with an iron fist. And instead, what the population did was planned a guerrilla war where they routed the colonizers, routed them repeatedly using guerrilla warfare tactics. The Second Amendment exists purely purely to enable a freedom-loving, peaceable population upon being ruled with tyranny to overthrow that tyrannical government. That, specifically, is what the Second Amendment is for. Now, the Third Amendment is about quartering troops. The government cannot force you to keep anyone in your home that you don't want in your home. And you look at some of these places where they're saying, well, hey, why don't you guys open up your private property and let some of these illegal immigrants in? That would be quartering. Fourth Amendment, illegal searches and seizures. They, uh, that one almost doesn't exist anymore as far as the government's concerned. You have to know your rights. And in knowing your rights, when these thugs come up and try and threaten you, harass you, or coerce you, and they realize you're not going to be an easy target, they back off most of the time. But in case they don't, 
That's why there is a Second Amendment, and it has been ruled in court numerous times now that defending yourself against unlawful action by law enforcement officers is a constitutionally protected activity. I'm not going to go through the whole Bill of Rights. Fifth Amendment is a guarantee of due process in various ways. Also a thing that they're really not paying any attention to these days. Yet another sign of why the Second Amendment is all important. So either we're going to get an election where the choices are not valid, not the full spread, not even approaching the ability of people to choose their leadership rather than select among a curated list of candidates who are all basically going to be the same. So either that happens or they realize it's going to be a problem and they have to allow the people to vote. But then once they allow the people to vote, if one of these populist candidates with supposed integrity and a plan to help excise the cancer from America, that is to say the bureaucratic deep state, the intelligence community, and all of the corruption in government and media. Not to mention, not to mention all those kid fuckers in Hollywood. Either we get an honest president who makes a legit go at trying to fix these problems and we back it and we do what we must if it comes to it to get rid of that cancer. Or all these other options all amount to the same thing. Either a candidate who supposedly was principled gets in and does none of the things they said they were going to do. Some establishment piece of shit gets the nomination and subsequently is elected. Or clearly the results are fucked, not a fair count, and we're being lied to and they say, shut the fuck up, this is who's in charge. In any of those circumstances, outside of a principled candidate winning the election and taking actual measures, all the rest of them come down to that Second Amendment. All of them come down to the Second Amendment, and there is no other alternative. Because we will either live free or we will die fighting for that freedom, but we will not live as slaves. None of us needs to do that. None of us should have to. We have a right from birth to live our lives, to be free, and to try and find some kind of happiness in this fucked up world. In the absence of the ability to live, in the absence of the ability to be free, in the absence of the ability to pursue happiness, the only life, the only freedom, the only happiness to pursue is the utter destruction of that evil. That's all I got. It's about five minutes shorter than the last one. Everybody stay frosty. Buy ammo.